immediately, right off the bat, what I'm getting from the Empress in reverse here. I'm getting that there is an understanding or an awareness of an energy or an environment that is not as loving or caring or nurturing as you might think. There is a leap of faith that's being taken away from that. Hey everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. <clears throat> so this is going to be a general energy reading for your day, for your moment, whenever. Please keep in mind that this is a general reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Um, also, this is a timeless reading. This is not meant for any specific date, any specific time period, just like it's not meant for any specific sign. So whenever you're guided to watch this reading and it resonates, then that's the message for you in that moment, yeah? All right, um, so we're just gonna have a little bit of story time before I get into the actual collective message, whatever spirit wants to discuss with the collective today. Um, so if you would like to skip straight ahead to the reading, check the timestamps in the description box below, also in the pinned comment down below. I might sneeze. Okay, um, so, ooh, happy Monday. Yeah, I hope you guys had a good weekend. Uh, it was a very relaxing weekend for me. It was a super nostalgic weekend for me. I, um, uh, I, if you have watched the, uh, the pick a card reading that I released yesterday, Sunday, um, then you know that, you know, I was, I mean, I personally have been going through this, but I was channeling for the collective that there is a lot of inner child healing that's happening lately. <laughs> Um, and because of all of that, I've been on a super nostalgic kick of like watching, um, TV programming from like the early nineties, <laughs> um, like Saturday morning cartoons and just like, you know, kid stuff and, um, like early 90s Nickelodeon and all that kind of stuff. So I've been in a super nostalgic mood, but it's been, I've been allowing myself to go through that. I've been allowing myself to rest in that, reside in that because of the inner child aspect. Side note, side note, before I go any further, um, that's Orion. The cats are inside right now. Uh, I woke up this morning and um, I opened the door for them and I was just sitting on my bed just looking outside and within like five minutes I saw, I could see a swarm of mosquitoes right outside the net. And so I decided as I was sitting there recognizing how just stepping out of my house I will be putting myself at risk of having my energy sapped. I decided that I'm not going to leave the doors open. And so I closed them. And so the cats are inside. And so they're going a little crazy at the moment because they can't go back outside because I have closed the doors and I'm not opening them up yet. Um, and so they're kind of like running around and all excited and, and crazy and stuff and I'm not letting them outside. So there may be a, a number of disruptions because of the cats. <laughs> Moving forward. So um, there's been a lot of inner child healing happening for the collective. And so for me, that translated into, it's translating into me connecting with things that I connected with as a child. Um, but I mean like, like early childhood, like, uh, it, it really got nostalgic when I reached the year 1995. Um, I was eight years old at that time. And I re I, and it, and it really it really struck me once I got to that time period because as eight, at eight years old, at 95, we had just moved from Mount Vernon in Westchester, New York up to Gilderland, New York because my dad was transferred. Uh, my dad was uh, promoted and transferred there. Um, and Gilderland was a really rough experience. I mean, I went from, you know, that, that's where I really began. I really began to experience the whole like token black kid type thing. Um, 
And that's where a lot of racism, I started to experience a lot of racism. I started to experience a lot of homophobia. Uh, eight years old, that time period was like, from then on, that's when shit, like I said, the, it's like I said previously, that's when shit really got real for me. Um, and that's where things really started to take a turn for the worst. And I started to learn about my identity and how that translates to the perception or it translates in the perception of other people. And it was just, that's where, that's where the snowball effect really started. But then this weekend, I went even deeper and I went back to like 92, 91. This is when I was like five, six years old. And no, wait, in 91, I was five. No, I was four. In 92, I was five. That's right. And in 1995, or I'm sorry, in 90, 1992, when I was five years old, that's when my memory really started to pick up. Um, and that's when I really started to comprehend a lot of what was going on around me, even though it, it didn't necessarily make sense or it didn't necessarily click right away. It was starting to, it was starting to register. All right. And I was allowing myself to sink into that, to settle into that because, um, I needed to experience that part of my, oh, I'm getting emotional now. I needed to experience that again. Um, but it's not just that, it's not that I was experiencing it from, um, like reliving trauma or anything like that. I was re-experiencing it in terms of being, being in that energy again and allowing myself to be in that energy and allowing myself to remember the good stuff and the fun aspects and the things that I really liked about that time period and rekindling the happiness. Um, so that was my weekend. And this is something that I mentioned on Friday in Morning Coffee, but, um, and I think, did I even, I think I mentioned the video, did I share it? I'm not sure, but there is a video that Gigi Young, uh, it's a little clip, a little uh, excerpt from one of her live streams, uh, live sessions, but she talks about the strength and the power of your inner child and how your connection with your inner child is so incredibly important important when it comes to working with the universe, manifesting, um, you know, doing any sort of spell, spell work or, 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 or energy work or, or spell casting or like that. If you want to, if you, if you're in, if you do that, um, just your power, your raw power, your raw strength, your, your, your God given ability to manifest is directly connected to your inner child. At least that's how I've come to understand it. And it was so timely when I found that message because I was trying to figure out at that time why there was such a heavy focus on the inner child other than the fact that, it, you know, it's a, it's a natural part of you, right? That's where your raw power comes from. And it, it, it makes sense because like, you know, you can look at it at one, at, from one perspective and, and look at how children are used and abused and are, are, are broken and are, um, uh, you know, assimilated or uh, into place or like indoctrinated at a very young age. I mean, you could understand that technically, logically, because, you know, you got to get them when they're early, right? You know, the, the, the younger they are, the younger they are, the more malleable their brains are they're more malleable they're they're, uh, they're the, the 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 easier it is for them to take in information and sh be shaped by that the older that you get the harder it is to you know do that right okay but also children or your a child has this level of imagination power um and and just energy that is God, what's the word I'm looking for here? That is, um, I don't know what word I'm looking for here, but it's so, it's, a, it's like a, it's such a pivotal thing. It's a, uh, my brain isn't working in terms of this at the moment, but that, but that energy is so important. And those that have lost their connection to it, who in essence, um, who some are, some of, some people call them the inorganic ones. Those that wish to, you could see it as those that are wanting to be 
uh, that are on walking this path of service to self and are using others as uh, uh, manipulating others into serving whatever it is the individual wants. Children are a huge um, target because of their power. Uh, so, anyway, um, I'm losing my focus here. I'm, I'm getting distracted. Uh, so anyway, um, I've been working on that a lot this weekend. But now it's gotten, like, all the work that I did on that has gotten me to the point where I'm starting to doubt everything. I'm starting to question everything. I, and, like, it's just... I'm 34 years old, you know? And by no means is my life over yet. And, and like, I'm, I still have so much more to experience. But at the same time, it's like I'm 34 years old and I'm, and, and I'm still stuck in this energetic space. Because I'm just now starting to get to the point where I can re-experience re it. I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. <laughs> I'm just like rambling at this point. Hopefully this is making sense to you guys. But anyway, the bloodsuckers are real, y'all. Like, I can't even go out of my apartment That's another really uh, frustrating aspect about where I find myself right now. Because one of the biggest things, the main aspects as to why I moved here was because, and you guys have seen it firsthand. I mean, if you, if you don't know, check, watch the next, the last, um, pick a card reading that I did for the, the Lionsgate portal. I was sitting right outside. Okay. I'm surrounded by nature here and it's one of the most amazing elements of why I decided to move here and I can't even be outside for extended periods of time without putting on a ton of repellent and I'm not trying to wear DEET all the time or wearing layers of clothing to prevent myself from getting bitten by mosquitoes. And they're even getting savvy enough where if the clothes that I'm wearing are thin enough, they'll still get me. Like, what's the point of moving here if I can't even be outside? It's frustrating, you guys. It's really frustrating. Okay, anyway, we're going to get into this here now that we're 12 minutes in. I'm, I'm done rambling um, for the moment. It's It's been, I don't know, it's been a rough... Oh, oh, I wanted to tell you guys this. I had a dream, a really strange dream this morning. So I ended up falling asleep pretty early last night. I fell asleep like around seven, eight o'clock. And um, so that so that translated into me waking up fairly early. Like I woke up at like three and couldn't really go back to sleep. Just kind of laid there for like an hour or so. Um, and finally I was able to drift back off to sleep. And I was thinking a lot about what I was just talking about, right? Okay. Um, but I, I fell back asleep and I, and I ended up having this mini little nightmarish type dream thing where all of a sudden I felt like this pressure in my neck and in my head and I looked and I had tubes coming out of me. So I felt it first and then I was, I was feeling around, I was like, what the hell is going on? And I remember in the dream saying, I'm turning into Brainiac. If any of you guys know, if you're familiar with the Marvel Universe, Brainiac is, no, not Marvel. Marvel, no, Brainiac isn't Marvel. I think Brainiac is DC. Whatever. Brainiac is a super villain. <sighs> that Superman fights and blah, blah, blah. Like I never read all the comics or anything, but I'm, I'm familiar with Brainiac because I kind of, I still really like that kind of stuff, right? So I was saying to myself, I'm turning into Brainiac, which is, which was weird. And the only reason I made that association because that was the only, that was the first image or character that came to mind that has these like tubes coming out of them, right? Okay. But he has them because he's connected to like this, this artificial intelligence mainframe type thing. Okay, whatever. That's the point though. 
And then in the dream, at the very end of the dream, right before I woke up, I was standing in front of a mirror and I was looking at myself in the mirror and I was looking at what was coming out of me and I had tubes here. So like very, very, very much like Frankenstein, you know how Frankenstein had those, those, those bolts right there on the neck? Well, for me, they were tubes. And then there were little tubes coming like at sections and it's not like they were connected with anything any, lo any longer, I guess we could say, but they were, they were coming out of my skull and they were, and there was this like one long tube coming out of my neck. And I was looking at it like, what the fuck is this? And the, the one in my neck, I actually would have been able to pull it out. Um, but I didn't want to do that because I'm like, first of all, that's probably going to hurt. Second of all, I'm going to have these gaping holes in my neck. Like I'm not like, I wanted to pull it out and I could, like it was loose. Like I could, I was kind of pulling at it and it was moving. I didn't feel anything, but like, what the fuck? Um... And to be honest with you guys, before I went back to sleep, before I fell asleep, I was just thinking about how life is changing around us and how there's a very real possibility that there's going to be an extreme form of segregation versus between those that are vaccinated and those that are not vaccinated. Um, there is this talk in the spiritual community about transhumanism in which people start to fuse themselves with inorganic material, like putting chips in them and, and, and all that kind of stuff. And it kind of, the, the, there's a fear surrounding the situation that um, the vaccine is the beginning part of this. <laughs> I mean, like, I don't know. But in that dream, for me, it was an affirmation that that's not the direction that I want to go in. I don't want to have tubes in me. I don't want to be, I don't want to be some sort of cyborg. I don't want to fuse myself with computers. Like, I, I want to stay an organic being. I want to stay connected to my spirit. I want to stay connected to God's source creator. So um, anyway, that dream. Uh, transhumanism is a real thing. It's becoming a real thing. Um, I mean, obviously we're not doing any of that yet, right? And there are plenty of, that, like there, we, but there are plenty of theories you can call it a, a, a you can call it a um conspiracy theory or whatnot whatever call it whatever you want okay but there are already situations in place that are starting to take shape that would lead to that are are giving more and more control to people to the elites, to the people in power, to the people in the money, with all the money, to the people that we've elected as our government officials. Y'all have heard my point of view on that. But to, for me, I guess it was a, a part of processing a, a lot of energies, especially with me reconnecting with my inner child. And I really feel like this is how this is all connected because growing up, I, well, we all are, and, and it's not like this is specific to me, but we all go through a process of either becoming indoctrinated into the establishment or rejecting that and being labeled like a hippie or a, a socialist or like, like these are bad things, right? And I think at this point in our time period and this point in our history, um, we're really facing the idea or the, 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 the mindset of you either assimilate or you get left out. And the vaccine is one of the main ways that this is being projected onto our consciousnesses, projected into our lives. I'm not sitting here saying that I'm an anti-vaxxer or I'm, I'm like, I'm not trying to, 
And if you if you've gotten, I mean, like I'm not trying to I'm not trying to say yay or nay there, but the idea that we could be continued to be segregated or separate separated because of this is terrifying. It's absolutely terrifying. I mean, we thought, I thought the whole pass, like the, the whole vaccine passport thing was bad. But there are countries like France and Italy, Greece and all that stuff that are saying you can't even go out to bars or movie theaters without, if you don't have the vaccine. Uh, uh, what is it? Um, Ticketmaster. Ticketmaster has done that. You can't go to certain, you can't, I don't think you can go to any of their events if you don't have the vaccine. That's terrifying. What is happening, you guys? And I think the more and more we connect, at least for me, the more and more I connect with my inner child, the more I start to realize these things and the more I want to fight against having to modify myself just to be a part of society. I refuse to do that. I wouldn't do it as a child, and I'm definitely not gonna do it as an adult. I hope this is making sense. It feels disjointed, it feels all over the place, but the idea, just, just the idea that people or society is getting so power hungry, so blatantly power hungry, that things like this, things that have been happening over the last year, I want to say. I mean, it's been happening for the longest time, but things that have been happening for the last year and people are just straight up getting away with it. Things that are literally illegal and people are just getting away with it. Like what the actual fuck is happening, guys? What is happening? I can't even step out of my door to go sit in nature without getting attacked by bloodsuckers. And sure, that is a, that's pretty normal, right? I'm an empath, right? So I go out and, and you know, I, I didn't, and, and, you know, my energy is sapped because blah, 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 but not whatever. All my empaths out there understand that. But like, really? It's more than just figurative. Think about it, guys. It's more than just a crazy coincidence. I don't know. Leave your comments in the comments section down below. Let me know how you feel. Let me know what you're thinking. Let me know how this is resonating with you. But I guess, let me just say this right here, right now. I refuse to assimilate. I refuse. I will not play your game. I will not join your society. If that means that I have to be excommunicated, then that's unfortunate. But at least I keep my soul. At least I keep my spirit. At least I keep my individuality. At least I keep the, be the being that I was born as, that God's source creator made me into. At least I, keep, I get to keep that. I will not let you or anyone else take that away from me, ever. I was born whole and intact. I will die whole and intact. Period. Let's move forward. Um, I am going to use the Epic Tarot today for this collective message. Uh, and clarity, you know, I've been using, for the clarifying, I've been using the after tarot. I want to use the before tarot just to switch it up a little bit today. Just to switch it up a little. Yeah? And then, of course, Oracle Guidance. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. What is this? Oh, nothing. Just gray hair. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, y'all. Let's get into this and see what messages we have for the collective. Here we go. Oh, 
Holy Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve their highest good and the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear and accurate, re accurate representation of the energies in terms of these situations, situationships, circumstances, romances, relationships, and places in which we all need it the most. Thank you so very much, Spirit. All right, guys. Five shuffles. Here we go. One. Two. Three. Four. Alrighty, kids. What messages do we have for the collective today? Please, Spirit, what do you want to discuss with the collective today, Spirit? Beings of love and light, ancestors, God source creator, angels, way showers, spirit guides. What would you like to discuss with us today? Mm. What would you like to discuss with us today, please, Spirit? What would you like to discuss with the collective today, please, Spirit? Okay. At the bottom of the deck, we have the Six of Wands. And three cards have come out here. Only two of them have fallen face down. Or, I'm sorry, face up. Uh, we have the Fool. We do have the Empress, but she is in reverse. And then we have the Nine of Cups. So immediately, right off the bat, what I'm getting from the Empress in reverse here, actually, I'm getting two things. One, I'm getting that there is an understanding or an awareness of an energy or an environment that is not as loving or caring or nurturing as you might think. And there is a leap of faith that's being taken away from that. Okay. Now, for others of us, this Empress in reverse can represent no longer kowtowing, is what I'm hearing specifically, uh, no longer enabling, no longer giving in, no longer being the enabling body that you have always been, the one that just goes along with whatever, whatever is wanted or whatever is said. At the bottom of the deck, you do have the Six of Cups. I'm sorry, the Six of Wands which is all about victory. In this deck, I haven't really, I can't really, I can't really make sense of this, of this card in this deck, at least what this is trying to say. Six of books. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, see, okay, underneath the six of wands is the nine of swords with the six of pentacles. And then the Seven of Swords. And then the Seven of Wands. And the Queen of Wands, which is in this deck of Phoenix to the Ten of Cups. So there is an understanding here that something is not reciprocal. And that's why we have the Empress in reverse here. And actually, to be honest with you guys, what I'm really feeling about the Empress in reverse it, for you or for the collective or for whomever is whomever is resonating with this reading, the sick, the Empress in reverse is representing not giving any longer, not being nurturing, not being, not being, not giving. That's, that, that's, that's what I want to say. Not giving any longer in order to preserve your own happiness. The nine of cups. This definitely is a feeling of, instead of continuing to give to you and depleting myself, I'm actually going to drink from my own cup and be happy. 
It's literally what I'm getting from this. The Empress with the Empress in reverse and the Nine of Cups here to the Fool. Okay, starting over. This is this kind of feels like an energetic reset for you, or for us, or for whomever is resonating with this reading. Finally giving back to myself instead of constantly giving to this collective or this environment or this society that doesn't give back. That just takes from me and expects me to continue to giving while they just continue taking, sometimes without even a thank you. I want to I wanna go a little bit further here. Can you give us some more, uh, some more understanding, a deeper understanding of this energy, please, Spirit? take all of this it's too much we have the ace of swords at the bottom of the deck i believe this is justice i'm so sorry guys hold on card number 11 is justice right i'm 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 having a brain fart <laughs> give me a second Hold on, bear with me. I know I'm an expert. I should know this, but my I'm I'm I literally I want to make sure that I I know what I'm looking at before I just start rambling things off. So give me a hot second. No, that's that's sixteen, right? Okay. Where seriously? Yes, I was right. Okay, so this is justice. Justice is here. You have that with the Knight of Cups. And the Three of Pentacles. Um, right. This has to do... I keep hearing transhumanism is running through my head. And it's probably just because of that dream. But some of you that some of you are connecting with that. And you need to do your own research or look into that for yourselves. Okay, great. Now that I've said that, can you stop repeating that word in my head? Yes, we can. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so, back to the situation here. Justice is being brought into your life. And that's by you following your heart and doing what it is that your heart is calling for and working on yourself. Three of Pentacles. But also, the Three of Pentacles is representing a level of self-mastery that you have already come to that is allowing you to, to move forward with your heart instead of your mind. That doesn't mean your mind is completely, like, non-existent. But instead of using straight logic or whatnot, whatever, to... Um, just that alone, just to move forward, your heart is leading the way now, okay? And that's because of the work you, that you've done on yourself, the Three of Pentacles. You are able to bring this justice into your life because of how you've been working on yourself, because of what it is you've come to understand about yourself at this point. You do have the Six of Pentacles here also. This has everything to do with reciprocity, at the bottom of the deck is the Ace of Swords to the Magician. You're in a position of power right now to manifest greater elements of what it is you want in your life because of the understanding, the truth, the knowledge, the wisdom that you come to, Ace of Swords. And it's from that place that you are manifesting something new now. This Empress in reverse here does not feel like a bad thing. This literally feels like you taking your loving, caring, and nurturing energy and turning it inward instead of being so focused outward. That's what this feels like, okay? So no, the Empress in, the, in reverse is not a bad thing. And yes, it may be, and that there may be an element of like not being nurturing, loving, caring, whatnot, whatever, and giving to the outside world, but that's because you need to be providing that to yourself right now or for an extended period of time, way off in the future, who knows? And that doesn't mean that you're not going to be loving, caring, compassionate, and giving to other people, but the focus is on yourself first and foremost right now, okay? 
Yeah, let's move to clarification then. For that, I'm using the B4 Turo. Yes, I'm gonna give this five shuffles. One. This is two. This is three. Four. And five. Alrighty. So, uh, what I really want to talk about here is the Empress in reverse. Yeah? So let's discuss this first and then we'll get on to the rest. What can you tell us about the Empress in reverse, please, Spirit? You have the Nine of Pentacles at the bottom of the deck. Independence, sovereignty, thinking for yourself, owning your own body, owning your own spirit, owning your own mind, owning your own heart. You also have that with the King of Pentacles and the Knight of Pentacles, okay? With the Two of Pentacles, the Eight of, Wands, eight of, the eight of Pentacles, and then the Knight of Wands. Look at all these pentacles. This is all very much about physical reality, okay? I, I, I guess, okay, what I just heard is that too much focus, really? All right, for someone or for some of you out here, for some of us out here, too much focus has been put on the spiritual and now we're needing to balance that with the physical. That's why the two of pentacles and the eight of pentacles is here, okay? And it feels like you are working on establishing yourself in some way, in some sort of physical form, or in some sort of greater physical form. King of Pentacles, Knight of Pentacles, Knight of Wands. Or, or, you are standing in the truth of who you know yourself to be. King of Pentacles. Standing very firm in your power, in your strength, in your ability, in your sense of abundance, I guess is also what I'm hearing. But there's a lot of movement here, you guys, because you have three of the knights so far, Knight of Pentacles, Knight of Wands, Knight of Cups, okay? So Knight of Pentacles, Knight of Wands, there is a level of feeling passionate, okay? Being, I, I just heard a starborn traveler. So this could be Energies of you recognizing, embracing, or owning a sense of being maybe like a star seed or um, uh, having a higher awareness or being an old soul, that kind of energy, right? That's what the Knight of Wands is representing here. Moving forward with the light that you came here to shine and taking it step by step, day by day, moment by moment, Knight of Pentacles, but also doing something thoroughly. And especially with this nine of pentacles here. And then you have the page of pentacles under that, the hanged man, good Lord, the three of wands. Okay, so it feels like, it feels like, sorry, mosquito watch. Um, with this nine of pentacles here, it feels like you're really, you're, and the knight, the nine and the knight of pentacles, it just feels like you're really questioning things. You're being very thorough. If you're going to choose to do something, you're going to do the research. You're going to make sure that you understand it. You're going to make sure that you feel it out first before you just dive in. You're not going to blindly follow something. Any longer. You may have in the past when the Empress was upright, but she's not. She's reversed. So instead of, and this is what this feels like, instead of projecting or putting all that loving, caring, nurturing, and maybe even enabling energy out into the universe, out into the collective, you're turning that around and using that for yourself now. I mean, I just heard you are your own first line of, you are your first line of defense. So it's like you're, this, it's weird, but the Empress in reverse feels like you're defending yourself now. 
This has everything to do with physical reality. The king, the knight, the page, the nine, the eight, the two of pentacles all came out for the empress in rebirth. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. Let's talk about justice now. What is justice here for the collective Holy Spirit? <laughs> Beautiful. Anything else? Oh. Oh, damn. Well, we've got all four of the knights, you guys, because now here's the knight of swords. So this is definitely an energy of fighting back. Fighting back. Okay, what justice, justice. <laughs> oh my God, I'm probably gonna catch so much flack for this shit, but like, whatever. Justice is here, yes? And justice is, is, is clarified by the star, judgment, the two of swords, and the two of wands in reverse. So, the first thing that I got with this is that there is no choice. We're fighting back against the energies of you don't have a choice here. You either assimilate or you or you you are excommunicated or something like that. That is what is being fought back against. That is what justice is. This energy of justice is bringing into our lives. That is what the energy of the empress in reverse being, I am not giving in to this any longer. I am a whole and complete human being just as I am. I don't need your synthetics. I don't need your drugs. I don't need, I don't need any of that. I am whole and complete and I'm capable of handling what this planet, what life ha gives me just by what I have been given by God source creator and just by what everyone else has also been given for that reason. That is the judgment call that is being asked us. We're being asked, we're being, we're answering to, and that's bringing a level of healing here. We have to have faith. We are literally fighting back against those that would blindfold us and tell us we don't have a choice. I keep hearing transhumanism is real. Whether you want to believe it or not, it is real. It has happened before. Not on this planet. It has happened before. We are literally in a, play, uh, in a time period in human history where history is repeating itself. The Knight of Swords, Strength, the Empress, the Hermit, the Hierophant, Death. The establishment cannot survive if we own up to who we really are. If we find the light within ourselves, if we show them that we will not dim our shine any longer, that we will not make ourselves less than just to please them, just to serve them. They cannot, the establishment cannot, cannot survive if we stand in the truth of our power and our light. And that is what we're being asked to do. 
That's what we're being asked to do, you guys. The star and judgment. We're being asked to shine. We're being asked to find the light within ourselves and shine that. You are a whole and complete human being. Everything you need has already been provided. The earth, the earth is capable of sustaining not only every other life form on the planet, but also human life. And yet we rape and pillage and then turn around and create synthetic inorganic compounds to, 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 to battle things like disease and whatnot when that could have been that could have been fought already. We have everything we need. Okay, I'm gonna leave it there. Um, and I wanna get closing Oracle guidance from the Gaia Oracle. All right, y'all. Five shuffles. One. Two. Three. Four. And five. Closing Oracle Guidance, please, Spirit. Okay, we have two, and I'm going to read both of them. We have card number 20, which is loss, grief, sadness, and then resurrection. And then we have card number 38, which boils down to an 11, Zen Garden, Inner Sanctuary. Let's start with 20. Loss. This card signifies a loss or disappointment of some kind. Perhaps a hope or dream you had now seems destined to fail. Or perhaps someone you love moves away, or a partnership seems likely to end. Yet this card also signifies resurrection, which means that the perceived loss will either not eventuate, or what you lose will be returned to you in a new way or form. Gaia, the Earth Mother, oversees this whole event. Feel her loving guidance this very moment. She is here for you and will never leave you, for Gaia and you are one eternally. The wheels of life keep turning. Life is never still, yet every transformation turns the wheel a little closer to the starting point, and once this point is reached, a new cycle begins and the journey continues. There is no end without a new beginning. And then we have Zen Garden. Life is full of ups and downs, a constant ebb and flow between war and peace. Everything has a positive and negative charge. Harmony and disharmony, order and chaos, clarity and confusion, calm and conflict are all partners. In our physical world, you cannot have one without the other. Yet, like all of us, you sometimes wish that things could change. Why can't we just live in peace? Well, the answer is that peace is possible, but you can only find it from within. The first step is to accept the world as it is. Just let things be. Trust that everything happens for a reason and that there is a higher purpose to all things. Now become aware of your breath. Let it guide you to a place of peace and light, a beautiful garden within the gold chamber of your heart. It is here, within your inner sanctuary, that you will find the peace you seek. Peace is only possible where there is peace within our hearts. When, excuse me, peace is only possible when there is peace within our hearts. When you are able to find peace even in the midst of chaos, then you are a true master. Alrighty, kids, I'm gonna leave it there. 
Thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I love you all so very much. I hope you have a fantastic day. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee very, very soon. Yes? Excellent. Take care. Mwah! Bye. <laughs>